technology in your business. How much is too much? Today on The Daily Is Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off. Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Ish Show, a show not just for rental housing providers or those who are in the landlording business, well, anybody who may be a self employed individual or in business for yourself and looking to get a little bit more white space on your calendar. Welcome to the Daily Ish Show. My name is Mark Dolfini, your host and coach. It is great to see you here today. So, today we are talking about technology in your business, any business really. But uh, today we are going to be a little bit more specific to those in the real estate realm. But uh, rel- technology in business in general, let me adjust this camera just a little bit. The technology in business has been really uh, obviously just, it's like every time you turn around, there's a new app, there's a new piece of software, there's a new gadget or something that can make your life easier. But, you know, so how much is too much and how much should you be relying on technology? So the the thought of really all this comes as, as now we're kind of at the peak of rental season and uh, we're kind of not winding down. We're kind of just coming into the peak of it and it's going to get busy for another couple of weeks. And uh, then in September, of course, it starts to, starts, it starts to get a little bit slower in the, uh, in the, the uh, rental property operation. But um, I know lots of people right now are just busier than they have been, obviously, coming out of COVID people starting to spend money again, people are traveling again. It's just, it's, it's nice, right? It's nice actually seeing people out and uh, the consumer is back and, and alive and well and doing, doing all the great things. But, you know, like some of the things that we're doing, and uh, this is also part, uh, this, I talk about this in the course, the Become a VIP in the Rental Business course, that, uh, you know, some of the things that you should do, I also talk about it in the Time Wealthy Investor 2.0 about how to, how to manage your move-ins and move-outs, right? And one of the things that we do, and we do it very well, is we do a video inspection at every change of possession. So why is that important? Well, you know, whether I am the owner of that property or there's another owner of that property as a broker, I'm, a, I'm also a property manager, um, that person probably wants to see the work that they paid for, right? But it's also, you know, so if they spent several thousand dollars on, on getting a getting a place renovated and fixed back up, you know, they should be able to have a method to see the renovations done so they don't actually have to get on an airplane and come back and take a look at the at the rental house that they're looking at, right? Um, not, not always, not a very good use of time wealth. So we want them to be time wealthy as well. So we do a video inspection in every change of possession. So when the resident moves out, hands us keys, we do a video inspection that we compare that to the original move-in video. And then when there is a new resident, we also do a move-in video. So again, the, that move-in video is shared with the uh, with the the owner of the property so they can compare that to the move out video and it's always keeping things at arm's length right so there's always at every change of possession whether we are getting keys or we are giving keys back or to a resident or to uh to anybody we're always having a video done at every change of possession so um that may sound well and good you're like well that's not that profound there coach why are you telling me this every phone has a video camera and lots of other devices have video cameras why why is that profound? Well, that's not really the profound part. The profound part is what we do with those videos and how you link that to and get that to the owner. So many property management software systems provide that where you can upload that video directly to the property management software system, right? So that is a really cool thing. But what if yours doesn't? What if yours doesn't have the space? What if it's not that that uh, advanced? What if they don't really allow that much cloud storage space, which is definitely, you know, videos get very, very, uh, very bulky and very hard to send, right? Because you can't really email them. The, the files are too large. So what do you do with them? Well, what if you had a system where you put them in a Dropbox and then you shared that Dropbox link with your, with the owner of their property, right? That's, that's something that you could easily do, but that takes, that takes technology to do that, right? So if you were doing that, this is a simple piece of technology. If now roughly half of our owners live out of the country, you know, they don't live just out of the state of Indiana, but they also live out of the country. So 
you know, it'd be good for them to see what it is that they're spending money on and investing and that sort of thing. So if they're investing in renovations to the property, they should be able to see that, right? So that's how you're leveraging technology to help folks do that. So if you're not doing that as a property manager, you definitely should start. I know that they would very much appreciate that sort of, um, you know, that, that's, that sort of intentional uh, sharing of what's going on with the properties. Photos can only do so much. Videos are definitely, definitely nice. So, um, so what are some other things though? And this was something that as I'm working with, I, I'm, I'm involved in a, in a software company, two different software companies actually. And one of the software companies that I'm working with, this particular group that I'm working with is a, is people about 20 years younger than me. So, which is kind of funny because they're all about Google Sheets, Google Docs, um, you know, all about that, where I have Microsoft products that I'm quite used to, and that's not what they're used to. <laughs> so I am all of a sudden I'm like, okay, how do I get back to that doc to see it again, right? How do I get back to this Google Sheet to see it again? Again, all this technology that's, that's continuing to evolve that I have to get used to because I'm working with a different group of, group of folks. So, you know, the, the other thing is, though, too, is like, especially if you're looking at, um, you know, getting leases signed or commitment letters signed or, or those sorts of things where right? a commitment letter might be a pre-lease, right? Why would a pre-lease be important? Well, you want to make sure that everybody has the basic understanding in terms of what you're agreeing to. You know, if you're going to come, if you're going to prepare a lease just for someone to look it over, you still want to know when their basic move in date you know, what, what does the house, what are the utilities that they need to get turned on? Um, you know, what, what are you allowing? What's your basic understanding in terms of the number of people that will be living there, that sort of thing. Right. So that way you can prepare the lease and they're signing it. So they don't go, wait a minute. I didn't know I had to pay for gas, water, and electric. Well, it's on the, it's on the commitment letter. It's on the pre-lease. So that way they know, and they can take that pre-lease if they're having to register with kids for school or, you know, whatever, whatever they might need that for, change their driver's license, you know, those sorts of things. So this is something you can use, easily use through DocuSign or some other electronic signature platform. Very, very handy, very, very easy. And I love the fact that many courtrooms, in fact, most courtrooms now are acknowledging that the electronic signature is in fact binding. Um, just make sure that it's the case in your court, you know, when your jurisdiction, you know, make sure you ask a a, an attorney, an appropriate attorney, don't ask a patent attorney, but ask a landlord tenant attorney and one who does evictions actively, not one who did one 30 years ago when the judges were, were very different, but under this current judge that they're in, because judges do change over time and make sure that, that, um, that the electronic signatures are acceptable in this particular court, wherever your jurisdiction is. Um, but another thing is I'm going to go out off the rails here and go away from from real estate just for a second, although it is very relevant, but um, a good CRM platform with a, you know, customer resource management um, platform. And that is, you know, if, if you're thinking about it in terms of, of managing contacts that come through, like something like Pipedrive. Pipedrive is a really cool um, um, software that lets people, let, lets you pretty much dictate how people are going to be categorized from initial contact through the, the lead process. Do they stay warm or cold? And then of course, to finally either closing the sale or they just said, don't call me anymore. I'm going to call the cops, <laughs> right? You know, that sort of thing. But you know, if you're a wholesaler, it's a great, great opportunity, great piece of gear that you should have to manage your, manage your leads because Many, many leads need to be contacted multiple times before they come up with a final decision. And sometimes it might just be no, not now. So you need to obviously have a mechanism in terms of following through with them so you can turn those cold leads into warm leads, into hot leads, into actual buyers or sellers of your, you know, buyers of your product or, you know, sellers of your real estate or whatever it is that you're trying to to uh, convince them of. So, so yeah, technology is a great thing and I think it's good, but you may, you must absolutely positively have the infrastructure, which would be, you know, that you can run on that high speed internet, that sort of thing, a laptop, whatever, and also make sure you have the processes in place to implement all the things that you're trying to accomplish. And that is all I have for today. Um, let's see here, Daniel Curry. Yes, there are a lot of people who use tech as a crutch. 
and there are far too many who do not use it often enough. Yep, I would absolutely agree, Daniel. Of those, they feel they are not smart enough or just do not know how technology might assist them. That is so true. That's one of the uh, several tech, um, several uh, podcasts that I think I, it's really cool. They often will ask their host or the host will ask of their, of their guest um, interviewee person, what, you know, what tech gadgetry that they like to use? What's their favorite piece of tech, which I think is a pretty cool thing. I don't have a favorite really um, because I use a lot of tech and I, but I'm careful about balancing it. I don't like to, you know, um, use one or overuse one. Like for example, for my chief of staff, she and I love using Voxer. It's really easy. I can send her a Vox, which is kind of a walkie talkie app back and forth where if I just have a random thought, I can hit the Voxer button, just speak my mind, you know, speak whatever's on my mind. And then, and then she gathers it and does whatever needs to be done. Right. Um, that works tremendously well for, for our situation. Right. Um, but it may not work better for, you know, may, may not work great in all situations because if the other person on the other end, on, on the other side of it may not be able to listen to messages, you know, because of other work commitments or whatever, then, uh, then that wouldn't work out well. But, but that's a great one. Obviously people are using texting and, uh, Facebook messenger apps and all sorts of messenger apps and things like that. Um, another one that I recently, uh, can, came across was Marco Polo, although I know it's not new, please don't please don't blast me. I know it's not new, but I, it's new to me. <laughs> and I thought it was actually kind of cool when someone sent me a Marco Polo for the first time. So, uh, Daniel, as a human being, uh, able to learn, you are, and always be smarter than a computer. 100%. Yeah, it's, uh, absolutely totally true. You, uh, you, it, garbage in garbage out, right? So that's, uh, that's everything. Thanks for your uh, co comments today, Daniel. And, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I've got a couple things I have to do before I get home, and uh, I am ready to take my boots off. It has been a long day. <laughs> All right, everybody, please be sure to place a value on your free time, because if you don't, someone else will. But most important, there is no amount of money that will make time irrelevant. Have an awesome day. See you guys next time.